Hi, I'm Mallory Kanasia. I'm a CCFT certified canine fitness trainer. I've been training dogs about 24 years now. I've only been involved in Sholos for about four, but I think I've worked with more than most people have even met in their entire lives. So we're gonna be talking about setting boundaries. So some good ways to set boundaries with your Sholos. For one, they're really prone to separation anxiety. This is a common complaint that I hear among Sholo owners. Uh, so one thing I like to do is preventatives. For one, make sure you always crate train your dogs. Crate training is not cruel. It's very, very safe for them. They, it gives them a safe place to feel like they can be away from danger. Um, it can also save their lives. Say you're in a natural disaster, you need to put your dog somewhere. Crate's the place you're gonna wanna put them. The other thing is making sure that your Sholo doesn't follow you places. So uh, setting up boundaries. I like to use X-Pens as a means to have some time for my dog to be away from me. Uh, I don't let them follow me into the bathroom is another really good example. And then like I said, the crate training is really good. The benefits of crate training is that it teaches your dogs to be away from you. It prevents them from feeling like they need to be with you, which really, really helps with the separation anxiety. There's also a safety aspect in this. If there's ever a time, say for instance, your dog doesn't like uh, repairmen or someone coming to work inside of your house, the crate is the safest place for them to be in. Uh, it's gonna prevent anybody from getting hurt and it's gonna make your dog feel a lot more safe about new people being in their environment. If you're unable to watch your dog, this can be a really, really awesome option as well. Now, the one that people don't really think about is a situation like an emergency. Say, well, we live in California here, we have a lot of earthquakes. If you have a major earthquake, you ever watch any of the videos of where they, what they do with animals when they find them is they put them in crates. Dog's already in a very stressed out situation. I want them to feel as comfortable as possible. A dog that's crate trained is gonna feel more safe and is going to feel more secure in the crate um, than a dog that hasn't been. There's never too late of a time for you to introduce crate training. Unfortunately, it's a little harder as they get older, especially if they've learned that the crate is a bad place. So the best time to get started with crate training is right when they come home as puppies. Some breeders, really good breeders, will have set you up with some crate training already. They may have, may not have, but uh, start them early, start them young, and make it fun. Some ways to build excitement about going into the crate. So one of my favorite things to do, for one, Feed a meal inside of the crate. Feed as many meals inside of the crate as possible. Dogs love food, Sholos really love food. So I'm gonna take a few of these really yummy treats here. I'm gonna put them in the crate. I'll let her see them in the crate. You want those? And I'm gonna close the crate. You wanna get the crate? You wanna get the treats? Yeah, what's in there? That's building interest in the, in the crate and it's making her really want to go in here. So when I do open it, you wanna go in? She's gonna go right in there and grab the treats. Now I didn't put them in there pretty far, so she's gonna just go a little bit. Next time I'm actually gonna put this real far behind. Oh, she, <laughs> so she wait. Go get it. Good girl. So this is a fun game you can do to help build uh, some excitement about going in the crate. So when I open the crate, wait, I ask my dog to wait. And I should be able to walk away from the crate, walk back to the crate. You can see this is very hard. That'll do. Good girl. And I ask her to come out. Good girl. Very good. I like to see if I can send my dog from a distance. Sochi, crate. Oh, she's not gonna listen. Here, hold on. Send my dog from a distance. Sochi, crate. Good girl. Wait. Good girl. This is a type of training, we call it crate games. So we're building a positive association with the crate, we're building impulse control, and it's kind of a game. So she's gotta wait for me to call her out. That'll do. Good girl, Sochi, thank you. Good girl. Some things you can do to help make the crate a more enjoyable space for your dog is, for one, make sure it's comfortable. Sholos love warm, they love blankets, they love soft things. If they're puppies, they might have a tendency to shred things, so make sure it's stuff you don't really care about. I also like to incorporate something that smells like me. This is one of my sweaters here, and um, I love this sweater, so obviously. Um, so I'm gonna put my sweater in here. When I ask my dog to go in, it's a little bit more 
like home. It's a little bit more enjoyable. Dogs are denning animals, so they do have a tendency to take to this pretty quickly. There are different types of crates. There are wire crates, like you see right here. Uh, this is a wire crate. This, this is, a, is a plastic crate. I personally like the plastic crates a little bit more as they simulate more of a den-like feel. The dogs feel a little bit more secure, in my experience. Negatives to that is that there's not a lot of ventilation in these compared to a wire crate. Um, if your dog is feeling nervous about this, every dog kind of has their own preference. Uh, you might want to go to something like a wire crate where they can see out of. Wire crates are also really good for puppies because they're inexpensive and they come with dividers so you can grow them over time with your dog.